And welcome to a new series of The Struggle Within on Ahlul Bayt TV with our guest Sayyid Hassan Sadr. And we will be discussing in this new series other issues related to the cultivation of our spirituality in the modern world today. And inshallah, we'll be looking at some of very key issues in relation to why we should follow this path of Islam and uh, other rational questions that sometimes are not always easily answered so do keep watching inshallah we look forward to, to your feedback uh, after this series inshallah assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam wa barakatuh thank you for giving us your time thank for you. this series as well um so we are inshallah going to be covering um different subjects with different aspects uh analyzing what spirituality is, um, what our aims are in life, what life is all about, um, what is our creator, why, which is a very good question, inshallah, that we'll be, to, we'll be talking about why we should follow Islam, um, which I think nowadays, again, many people may think, well, that's obvious, it's such a great way of life, but how can you question it? But many of the youth today, because of, you know, going through a different education system, um, Western education system around the world uh, are having these questions rising in their minds and feeling that they can't um, they can't ask these questions because it's seen as um, doubting, which is not not approved of in a, in a communal sense. Although questioning is, is allowed in Islam, so I think that's a very uh, important question, inshallah, that we will be looking at as well. Um, but first of all, um, we can start off by looking at what life is all about um, and what our aims should be in life. Um, and I think, again, this is a good question because, again, we are living in a world where we have, we're living in, a, we could say, two value systems, you know, the Islamic value system and the secular value system that each have different demands, you know, up upon us. Uh, and maybe some youth um, and even older people struggle to kind of find their path uh, within all this. So how, how can people choose their aims? Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you very much um, uh, for the introduction. Indeed, questions are welcome. Um, uh, people who have questions, young and old, uh, should be encouraged to ask these questions, uh, discuss the answers, and if they're not satisfied with the answers, they should ask more questions. The beauty of this religion, which has a very strong rational foundation is that it encourages people to ask questions as much as they like. And indeed, uh, no one should um, uh, start their journey in life. Uh, and those who want to review it halfway through yeah. their journey or so on, uh, no one should continue really without being certain that they are on the right path. Mm and that the, the, the lifestyle they've chosen is the right one. And for, for Muslims, uh, people of faith in general, and Muslims specifically, um, they should be able to live anywhere in the world, regardless of what society chooses the value system to be in accordance with their divinely chosen principles. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, over the the, the series, we will, we will discuss how one could do that. In terms of choosing uh, goals, it is practical for us to choose small, limited goals in life as we go along. Um, a goal of um, uh, graduating uh, with a particular degree, accomplishing a certain level of education, setting a particular business, becoming uh, a professional in one field or the other. These are all limited steps. But if we look at humanity, at, at, at mankind, if we examine the human being, it's not difficult to realize that people will never, ever be satisfied with limited goals. Yeah with goals that have an end to them. 
You study a degree, it finishes in three, four, five, six years. You become an expert in a particular field of knowledge. Um, you spend a few years doing it. If you reach a conclusion, if you make a breakthrough, if you're a pioneer in something, and you've reached that limit, you're never satisfied. People are never satisfied with limits, with ends. Mm -hmm. Once they reach that, they yearn for more. And this, I think, should encourage us to review our goals in life. How could we, as human beings who yearn for the unlimited, be satisfied with goals that are limited? Yeah. And the answer is, we'll never be. So from a, a faith point of view, from an Islamic point of view, set your small goals. They are limited, they are milestones, but the overall goal should be an unlimited one. One that has no limits, mm -hmm. has no borders, has no end. And this over, overall goal is the one that can in, can quench the thirst of the human being in his or her journey. And that can only be the absolute perfect creator whom rationality leads to the conclusion that he must exist. So in essence, what we are saying is God, the absolute perfection, is the overall, overall goal in life for people to ascend to, for yeah. people to uh, take their journey towards him. Not, a, not in a physical sense indeed, because he has no limits. Yeah. But that's the overall aim in life. And using these limited steps, these milestones, is acceptable as long as overall you have him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the unlimited higher being as the overall aim in life, mm. um, which will uh, will continue to inspire people, continue to draw people closer and closer to him, even after they end this chapter in this life Inshallah. and start the next one. Inshallah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember as I was coming into Islam 20 years ago, how a thought occurred to me um, with regard to Islam is that it does place God as the center as the pillar on which everything else rests. And although this might seem an obvious point, when you've been living a more secularized life, albeit searching for spirituality and reading into spirituality, um, what can happen is that um, God is somewhere there, mm. but other things are there as well. So it's Indeed. kind of mixed up together um, and of course you may be following the trends of your society or the trends of your social group um, you know you may sort of absorb without realizing um, the aims and objectives of those around you uh, because obviously you're made to feel well this is what you should aim for indeed and I think kids go through that at school um, and, and so the aim becomes, oh, I need to fit into this group or I need to kind of <clears throat> um, reach what this group is aiming for. And then you can become dissatisfied and, you know, then be looking again for, for something Indeed. else. And the, 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 the whole peer pressure or the herd mentality, if yeah. I may be a bit more objective, um, into let's just follow, you know, the herd, yeah. follow what people are doing. Um, because the moment you step out of this herd, the moment you you are a bit more unique, then you are obviously, uh, could be subjecting yourself to extra pressure and, 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 and so on. But I would like to remind myself uh, and the viewers is that we take the Imams of Ahlul Bayt salam, we take the prophets, the messengers of Allah, and indeed the final of them and their master, Prophet of Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, as our role models. Mm. And it is worth reminding ourselves that those prophets, messengers and imams, most of them have lived in societies where the divinely chosen value system was not established. Yeah. 
So they lived as minorities, including the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu He only lived the last 10 years of his life uh, you know, in charge of the, 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 the Muslim state yeah. with the capital in Medina. Uh, most of his life he lived amongst people who did not share his value system. And we know about what happened to the Imams after. And for the Prophets before the Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa it was even more obvious. They lived all their lives in a society that had a different value system, people who had different aspirations. But that's not an excuse. In fact, their struggle should be the role, the role model, should be the blueprint for us. Yeah. And I know that Muslims who live in, in a, a secular societies, um, and even those who live in the Middle East or, or in, in Muslim-dominated uh, countries or parts of the world, they themselves complain that the value system that's actually yeah. on the street does not, is not in harmony with yes. the Islamic or uh, the value system. It's not an excuse. In fact, it brings the struggle of the prophets, the messengers and the imams closer to our hearts. So we should be reading more about them, the Holy Quran and the books of traditions. Uh, and we are more and more inspired by their stories because we can relate to them. Mm -hmm. Um, and just uh, one other important point about, um, you say, following the herd, um, that even once you come into this path, you still need to keep your own personal aims in mind so that you don't, again, attach yourself to a religious group or you're not just doing what, you, again, your friends, albeit practicing Muslims, you're not just doing what they're doing um, or feeling the pressure to do what they're Indeed. doing. So, you, so even within a Muslim community, you still need to have your aims indeed. In, in sight. Indeed, indeed, there's, there's no doubt about it, that uh, people are always encouraged to revisit their aims and assess them. Are they in accordance with, the, with our divinely chosen values, with the legacy of the prophets, the messengers and the imams? Or are they cultural or you know, peer pressure and so on? Um, uh, the moment we place God, the Creator, like the Prophets, the Messengers and the Most placed Him, the center of our lives, things f fall into places. Yeah. Uh, the moment we place other limited goals, other limited tasks to fit in, to achieve this, to achieve that, yeah. the means, once we focus on the means or the limited goals, we will lose focus and he will not be there. Mm -hmm. And if he's not yeah. there, then we're not on the straight path. Yeah. And then, of course, you're open to um, whatever, so many different things that are, you know, thrown in people's faces and, and, and conflicting messages. And, um, and then, of course, you know, people lose that sense of, well, what is my life all about? Um, so, um, and we have this um, verse from Holy Quran, which says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I have not created jinn and man except to worship me, um, or maybe it means to serve me. Um, I mean, this word, um, worship. Abada, or, yes. yeah, yeah. To, yeah. To, to, to worship or to serve. Um, I, 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 sometimes the term worship to me sounds a bit Christian, and the Christian idea of worship is often a bit formal, going to church on Sundays, or um, although I'm sure Christians would say that you know it's it's, it's much deeper than that. Indeed. Um, but it requires further exploration, yeah. doesn't it? Doesn't it? And I, I always encourage myself first and, and and everyone to to refer back to our scholars, yeah. to to those who spend their life, their time studying this. Um, those who followed the path of Ahlul Bayt, the path of Islam, <clears throat> you will find an immense wealth there of explanation. And this particular verse, which I'm uh, very glad you, you mentioned, from chapter 51, mm -hmm. um, Surah al dhariyat verse 56, I have only created jinn and mankind to worship me. Indeed, the most obvious explanation uh, of the word worship are the set of rituals that we do in obedience to the Creator, yeah. and indeed these are uh, parts, uh, an example of what worshipping the Creator is. However, our scholars, when they uh, when they try and define worship in a more comprehensive 
sense, it actually has a different meaning. Right. The word worship here means to restrict one's thoughts, beliefs and actions, to restrict them in accordance with the will of the Creator. So the human being ascends in this journey of redirecting yeah. all his or her thoughts, beliefs and actions in accordance with the will of the Creator. So whenever we're thinking about two different thoughts, we reassess them in accordance with His will. Mm -hmm. Whenever we have two sets of beliefs, we reassess them in accordance to His will. When we want to act the smallest, the least important of acts, which is to look, to say something, or the more important uh, acts of how to treat one's parents, how to treat one's neighbours, how to stand against injustice, yeah. whether to pray on time or not, how to, you know, to help the homeless person or not, and so on. The smallest and the biggest of decisions, of actions, should be in accordance with the will of the Creator. And since rationally, we will, inshallah, visit and prove, and prove that the Creator is the absolute source of perfection. So His will must be a perfect yeah. will, must be not only good, not only right, it is the right thing to do. So the more the human being spends reassessing his ideas, beliefs and actions in accordance with this perfect will, the more perfect his ideas, beliefs and actions would be, the more perfect of a human being he or she, he or she would be. Mm. And that is ultimately the aim of the creation, because this verse clearly states that I've only created jinn and mankind to worship me, which equals I've only created jinn and mankind to ascend towards me, which equals I've only created jinn and mankind to ascend towards perfection. Yeah. The aim of the creation becomes perfection. I've only created jinn and mankind to reach perfection. And since perfection has no limits, because God has no limits, yeah. this journey is never ending. And that is the only journey that would quench the thirst of mankind. Mm -hmm. The journey that has no limits towards perfection, towards development, towards improvement. Yeah. And this is not something abstract, this is towards the Creator, the higher being, the just, the fair, the beautiful, the absolute source of perfection. Um, how this reflects on our lives, it starts within the individual himself or herself, perfecting his thoughts, his beliefs, his, uh, his actions, mm. and then it starts to expand to the family unit, to the community, to the society, and eventually to humanity. And that's what we believe Imam Mahdi will do. Ajallah Farajah. He will take humanity in its last chapter towards the absolute perfection, that this earth will be not only on individual levels, which people of faith, Muslims, are encouraged to practice at the moment, mm. themselves, their families, but obviously expand this to encompass the whole of mankind, the whole of this planet. This planet will be like God, like God wanted it to be, a perfect place to be in. Uh, I mean, I, I am aware also in uh, a tafsir that is accepted actually in, by Sunni and Shia that Ibn Abbas um, said that worship also means to know. So um, to worship Allah, to serve Allah, we of course we need to know Allah. Indeed. And that's a whole other, you know, topic. Like, how do I come to know Allah? Um, although, you know, Holy Quran does say like how we can come to uh, see the signs of Allah, to see the proofs of Allah's existence. So it is possible to of course. to come to know Allah. Of course, ideas, the th all thoughts, all beliefs. So what we believe in about Him and all the actions should be accordance with His will. Mm. And indeed, knowing Him, believing in Him, and acting in accordance with Him, which includes. The smallest look, the whisper, the prayers, hajj, ziyara, 
everything, everything we do in accordance with his will, it will be like taking steps towards him closer and closer and closer. Um, and obviously that means closer and closer towards perfection, uh, which is our journey. Inshallah. Um, also, something I wanted to touch upon, which maybe we can continue uh, after the break, is, um, I mean, we're talking about per perfecting our actions and words and thoughts, and people might want to know how to do that, especially when people have, like, I mean, this series is called The Struggle Within, people have inner struggles. They might not be able very easily to... Uh, conduct themselves in the way that they want to conduct themselves. You know, um, they may feel emotional, get have m emotional reactions to things, or get upset or angry easily. Um, so, it's it's. We, we, we must discuss it in detail. Yes. There are a few steps that one must take back. Right. To reevaluate, um, and everything is possible. Mm -hmm. No thought, no action. Uh, is there that someone is born with. There right. is no such idea right. that I can't change, I can't control myself, it's beyond me. Everything is possible Islamically, and that's what uh, life coaches teach these days. Yeah. And we are um, pleased to say that our religion has encouraged this idea of change. Even at the last chapter of your life, you can change. Mm. The last moment, you could change yeah. from being and I'm sure the audience this doesn't apply to them, but, but from being the worst of mankind, someone who's ready to kill the son of the Prophet, mm. Imam Hussein, mm. to someone who is the first to defend him, yeah. like Al-Hur. Mm. Uh, you could change from being an, a, uh, someone who would aid the tyrant of the time, like the, the magicians at the time of yeah. Moses, Musa alayhi salam, yes. to, be, to being the first believers in Moses and Harun. So that switch, that change, I mean, what kind of, what kind of uh, impulses, thoughts, benefits uh, uh, were they getting in that previous position? They were able to completely detach from all this and take a different position. Mm -hmm. uh, and Islam documents this and science proves it. Everyone can change. Mm -hmm.